Praise the Lord. So good to see you this evening. Let's all stand together, please. Brother Mary, would you ask the Lord to bless you? Mr. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to hear your word, Lord. Yes. As our Pastor Roger brings it to us, Lord, Lord. to be a special anointing upon him. If you open our hearts and minds to receive, Lord, to be all of praise and glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. 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 We're going to try a new song tonight. Take out your Bibles. And turn to Psalm 134. So Psalm 134 in the Bibles, there's some of the benches there. And it's verses 1 and 2. The very first word is behold, though, and we're not going to use that word. But the rest of it follows 1 and 2. 134, 1 and 2, starting at bless ye the Lord. 134. One and two, starting at Bless Ye the Lord. Bless Ye the Lord.
you, dear Lord, for another day that you have given to us. We thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for the many blessings that we've enjoyed this day, even though it's some, in some way, Lord Jesus, we're so used to them that we forget what those blessings are. But I pray, Lord, that you would draw them before us, bring them to our remembrance, and help us, dear Lord, to see just how blessed we are and how wonderful it is Dear Lord, to be one of your children, to be born again, to be able to follow after you, and have that peace and rest and joy that only you can give us. And so, Father, thank you for today. Thank you for my brothers and sisters that have come out. And I pray, dear Lord Jesus, that as we now look to the word, once again, I'm asking, Father, for your anointing. I'm asking, dear Lord Jesus, for that anointing to not only fall upon me as I present your word, but Lord, that it extend to each and every one, that all, dear Lord God, would feel the blessing of your word and feel the strength that comes only from you. And so, dear Lord Jesus, may we rejoice in all things and give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I had a phone conversation with my mother this week, and uh, she's been concerned of, about my health. Once a mother, always a mother. Um, and that's great. Um, and so she was a little cross with me, actually, not in a big way, but I had mentioned to her that I was uh, once again trying to do some exercising in the mornings, uh, but that that was sometimes resulting in a little bit more coughing. And uh, she listened patiently, and then she said quietly, but I could hear a tone there, do you really have to exercise in the morning? I suppose I don't have to, but it fits in a little bit as a good introduction uh, to a victory message that I would like to share with you this evening. That God gave me some verses that really speak to the fact that through every trial and every test, and we have them all, uh, they come in different shapes and sizes, uh, they happen to us at different moments along our journey, our walk, um, and not one is necessarily the same as another, uh, and the ones that come my way are not necessarily those that come your way, but the trials and tests that we do have, as God's people, my title is a reminder, perhaps first and foremost to me, but I am blessed to be able to share it with you, that as God's people, we are on the winning side. Now, this is not a new message, but it's an important one, I think, because when we find ourselves in the midst of a trial, when we find ourselves in the wilderness, um, I have this vision, uh, this image of being in the jungle, and the jungle has a way of uh, enclosing around a person. There's a sort of a section at the bottom that's clear that you might be able to hack your way through, but a true tropical jungle has a very, very, very thick canopy, so that even in the middle of the day, it's dark. You can't see, and to try and break through or find a way through to where the sun is shining, even though you know that above the clouds, or above the, the darkness that seems to be hanging over you at the time, there is sunshine. There are times, I think, that we all need reminders. Um, reminders that we are victorious in Christ. Reminders that we need not be downhearted, that Jesus has provided a way of victory for each and every one of us. See, for me, one of my areas of weakness is, is my lungs. And uh, sometimes I wish they would be, you know, would be somewhere else or not at all. Um, but that's been something I've had since childhood. And right away, when I have a cold, things settle in the lungs. And so you will hear me coughing. More so when I exert myself. However, that exerting loosens things up. It makes my lungs expand more than they might want to comfortably do so. I think it breaks things loose that are perhaps clinging uh, to the inside of my lungs. And when those things shift, then God has provided a way to try and get those things out, and that would be coughing. Um, and so, excuse me when I cough when I'm singing, 
But praise the Lord, it is getting better. Uh, and it is certainly not as frequent as it was before. So I said to my mother, I said, you know, yes. I said, I could probably sit. I could probably breathe very shallow, in a very shallow way. Um, and that would probably result in less coughing now. But it's not going to be healthy in the long run. And when these temptations or trials come our way, I think that as God's people, one of the things we need to do is acknowledge, not worship and not uh, exalt the trial or the test, but acknowledge the trial, acknowledge the test, but more than anything else, acknowledge that God has a way to overcome, that God has a way to defeat whatever it is, whatever situation you or I happen to be going through. So the Lord spoke to me about victory. The Lord spoke to me about encouragement. And as God's people, you know, in this world today that is so very, very full of negativism, um, negative thoughts here, there, and woe is me, and problems here, and problems there, let us be different. Let us be those peculiar people that while we acknowledge there are those trials and tests, we want to spend more time giving praise, honor, and glory to the one and the only one that is going to see us through that trial, that test, no matter what it happens to be. So I have to start this evening back with a verse that I used recently. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and 13. This is the one that says, in 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, There have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. God doesn't take a holiday. God doesn't need red tape. Pastor John and I were lamenting a little bit today and, and uh, talking about how long it's taking for our plumber to get the uh, approval, all of the locates that are necessary for some work that needs to happen out front there by the Tranquility Business. And it's been uh, oh, a week and a half, coming up on two weeks, I guess, now, uh, almost, that we're waiting for these locates to take place. And we finally got through to our plumber this evening, and they got every one but one. And he's also still waiting for a permit from the city. And, uh, you know, uh, the red tape the bureaucracy, the layers upon layers upon layers. And if you go out there and you look at the sidewalk, you won't even see a hole, you won't even see gravel because the city fixed their part and then in their wisdom, they covered it up with asphalt and covered it all up so now when our plumber comes, he can dig it all up again. Oh, what a waste. But that's the way man works. Praise the Lord that God doesn't work that way. That he doesn't have to wait for red tape, he doesn't have to wait for bureaucracy, or anything like that. As a matter of fact, he doesn't have to do things over and over and over and over again. God can get it right the first time. Because he is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will, and this is the part that we're going to celebrate a little bit more this evening, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. I love that verse. I suppose if I were completely honest with you, I would love it a little more if it said there would never be a temptation, that there would never be a trial, that there would never be a reason to have to escape. Well, that day will come when the Lord calls me home. Then as we gather around the throne, there will be no more trial, no more temptation, no more test. And guess what? We will live finally in a place where there is no more need to escape because we'll be in the best place. But that only happens as we finish the journey that we are on now. And so God has made it so that as God's people, we are to be different. We are to be joyful. We are to have a song of praise and victory every day. And I know sometimes that can be a challenge. But every day, we are to give God thanks and praise Him 
so that the world around us notices and so that we are then able to give praise, honor, and glory to Him. There were two verses actually that got me going with this particular message and they were, are both in Psalms, two different places in Psalms. Turn with me to Psalm 59. We'll start with this one. <coughs> and both of these verses struck me because they speak and they spoke to my heart about God's caring and His provision. You see, it's one thing to care for someone. It's something to say, I care about you, I worry about you. But it's something completely different to combine that caring with provision. To be able to say more than just, I care about you but also then to put something into action to be able to offer something that then helps that person or that situation so that it's no longer a concern. And that's the glory of God. That's the mercy of God. God doesn't just say from somewhere up on high that I love you and I want you to be my children and I care for you. He doesn't just say that. He also says, I will provide. I will make a way. I will be there in the darkest hour. I will be there to comfort, to lead, and to guide. And it's for that reason, if no other reason alone, that we must be and should be thankful. God never leaves me alone. Never. He's there. And He cares and He provides. Psalm 59 Verse 10. The God of my mercy shall prevent me, but God shall let me see my desires upon my enemies. Now, the um, translation that in King James says, prevent me. <clears throat> the original text also has a component to it that speaks of meeting someone. So, along the road, or, you know, if you, you call somebody up, if I call up Sister Major and I say, you know, I'll meet you behind the apartment at a certain time, um, that's the sort of the idea here that is being conveyed in this particular psalm. And so the psalmist here is saying, you know, that God who is merciful, God who's always there, He's going to meet me. He's going to come to where I am. You see, when you meet somebody, right, if I say to Sister Majors, I'm going to meet you behind the apartment, and then I never show up, then obviously I never met with her. And so when the Lord says, I'm going to meet you, it has a lot of um, subtle but important meanings kind of buried in that, that sometimes we just kind of quickly think about and don't give too much thought over, but I want to push you a little bit this evening. If you say you're going to meet somebody, it's important to know where that person is and where they are going to be. And so you see, when the Lord says that, to me it says, God knows exactly where I am right now. He knows where I'm going to be in the future, whether that's 10 seconds from now or 10 hours from now or a month from now. God knows. And according to the psalmist, he's going to prevent me or meet me. And when he is there with me, he's going to do something. And this is the God who provides. And in this particular case, it's speaking about, and there's obviously a struggle here with enemies. Whether those be people, or thoughts, or sickness, or whatever it happens to be. God is going to meet and then he is going to, it seems obvious to me, <clears throat> provide victory. Because the psalmist says he's going to be allowed to witness, to see those enemies defeated. Or the desires of his heart. So that could be he's wishing for the enemy to be defeated. Perhaps he was praying for the enemy to be uh, converted and saved, which would be even better, I think, than seeing them defeated. It means kind of the same thing, but in a different sort of manner. 
Um, you know, whatever it is, the enemy is going to be overcome. And it is because God meets us where we are, when we call upon him, that we can then witness the victory that God gives us over that enemy. Now, when you are a witness, that means that you have every right to testify. That means every right is yours to then share what the Lord has done. Because you witnessed it. You have seen it. And you see, that whole spirit of victory is always there. Psalm 30 Verse 11, I've used this verse at one point in the past. I can't tell you exactly when, but it says, Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. What a wonderful verse. You'll notice that the psalmist here, we believe, uh, as it says at the beginning of this psalm, a psalm and song of the dedication of the house of David, so whether David wrote it or not, we're not 100% sure, but they seem to feel they know when it was sung, uh, when it was used. But notice, there was a time of mourning. That's kind of like that temptation or trial, okay? But when that comes, right, the Lord is able to turn us from that and turn us from mourning into dancing. And dancing here representing joy, gladness. And then it's repeated in another sort of imagery. Thou hast put off my sackcloth, sackcloth for mourning, sadness, heaviness, and girded me with gladness. Or we could use there, clothed me with gladness. When you think about, you know, what the Lord has done for us, and really how consistent the scripture is, you see, in that psalm we see again this idea of putting off the old, and putting on the new. It fits in with the whole idea of being born again. It fits in with that whole concept and gift of salvation that God gives us. And how we are then to be new creatures. And so the things of old, and right now, we see around us a world that is, seems to be in a constant state of mourning, complaining about this thing, that thing. Nothing is good enough. And perhaps... Rightly so, you could say there are a lot of things that are wrong. But remember, as a child of God, we don't dwell there. Because this is not my home. I'm traveling through. I'm going to leave this place behind. In whatever state it happens to be. And I am going to claim, as I would encourage you to do the same. Dancing and gladness. What a wonderful thing to think that the Lord will gird us, or can gird us, or can clothe us with gladness. Something that covers us, right? Clothing uh, covers us, it protects us in a sense, okay? Um, and, you know, it's also something that other people see. And so, what the Lord gives us is a gift that not only impacts us internally, but if we use that image of clothing, it's also something that everyone can see on the outside. In this case, it's that feeling of gladness and joy, a positive attitude, because God has given us the victory. Deuteronomy chapter 20. I picked out some verses that speak of victory. And the, the verses that we want to take a look at now are verses that highlight the fact, and this is something we must never forget, that victory doesn't come from me. It doesn't come from you. It doesn't come from a committee. It doesn't come from an organization. It doesn't come from a government. It doesn't come from a group of people getting together. Victory for God's people always, period, always, comes from the Lord. Okay? And so because of that, that not only makes me feel very tiny, but it also helps me to remember to be humble. Because were it not for the Lord, 
we all know we'd be in a bigger mess, right? We would be in big, bad shape. And so every victory that you've had is a gift from the Lord. Just imagine. You know, everything, you know, if you just stop and think about even just today. Anything that you can tell me, if I came to you and I said, tell me about your day, tell me what went well today. <coughs> Everything, every single moment that went well is a gift of victory from God. And so when I say that, and then I think about that for, my, for myself, <coughs> how is it possible that I can't praise Him? How is it possible that I couldn't always or wouldn't always have a word of thanksgiving and praise for the Lord. If everything, if I truly am comprehending that absolutely every victory comes from the Lord. Why do I say that? Because the scripture tells us that. Deuteronomy chapter 20, <clears throat> speaking here about uh, perhaps natural enemies, but again a spiritual application. <coughs> Excuse me. Verse 1. When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies, now, see, this is where I take a little bit of license, and I say, it might not be a physical person. Could be the struggle I'm having with my lungs. Could be a struggle I'm having with uh, myself spiritually. It could be a number of different things. But when thou goest out to battle, and that again, you see, says to me, get on the exercise machine, Sing, even though you might end up coughing. Go to battle against these things as the Lord gives you strength. Okay? I told my mom, I said, I suppose if I fall off the exercise machine and I can't breathe anymore, then I probably did a little bit too much. But if it's just that I'm coughing, well, as far as I'm concerned, that's just keeping things loose, and that's moving things in the right direction. And so, to me, that's going to battle. That's me saying, no, Lord, I'm not going to be defeated in Jesus' name. We're going to keep pushing. That doesn't mean you're going to do foolish things. But as the Lord gives us strength, just remember, don't leave Deuteronomy, but that just helped me to see something, right? As it said there in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, where we started, right? That God is faithful, who, so in other words, the Lord, will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will, so it's God who's doing this, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. So God is the one that's providing. So what I'm saying is, <clears throat> don't be foolish, but as the Lord provides, then do it. Then move with it. See, I have this, uh, sorry, there are many little sort of things that come to mind. My father, who ultimately passed away from a heart attack, but uh, had cardiopulmonary disease. Pulmonary fibrosis. Oh, sorry. Pulmonary fibrosis. I always get that one mixed up. Basically, his lungs were scarring up, and he could no longer breathe. And so he was on oxygen at the end, because his lungs, you could pump as much oxygen into somebody who has that particular ailment, and the lungs are no lo longer able to convert the oxygen. But the doctors told him that if he continued, if he kept pushing himself, it would help. And it would strengthen his lungs, and it might increase his lifespan. Once you're diagnosed with that, I remember when my dad first told me that's what the doctor said, they said it's about five years. Uh, and he made it just about to that time. But perhaps he might have <coughs> managed to live a little bit longer had he pushed himself a little harder. Now that's easy for me to say, but he's my dad, and I'm his son, so I guess I can take a liberty there. But I know that as it got harder to breathe, the temptation was to do less and less and less. Which only really increased 
the disability, right? Your lungs and everything else are a muscle. It's all muscles around your lungs that help them expand and contract. And you know as well as I do, right? I've even heard Brother Mary testify of this a few times. When you don't use a muscle for a little while, then we thank God for strength, but then it hurts, right? You know, because uh, it just doesn't quite move the way that it has before. And that's for all of us, young or old. So sometimes we have to push a little bit harder. Or as scripture talks about, we have to work on our salvation. Or we have to reach for the Lord. You see, there's something, yes, that we have to do. And here, this first verse here in Deuteronomy, back in Deuteronomy 20, verse 1, when thou goest out to battle against thine enemies. We have to go to battle. That's why in the New Testament it talks all about the armor. God's not saying, you just relax, you sit here, you do nothing. No. When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies. So if you have a pain, you have an ache, you have an ailment, with God's wisdom, only with God's wisdom, when the Lord says push a little harder, when the Lord says reach a little bit further, then God, along with the temptation or the ailment, will make a way. And that verse tells me he never gives me a bigger battle to deal with than what he has prepared me for or what he's given me the power for. So we can overcome all of these things. And so when thou goest out to battle against thine enemies <coughs> and seest the horses and chariots and a people more than thou, be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God is with thee which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be when ye are come nigh unto the battle, that the priest shall approach the, and speak unto the people, and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble, neither be terrified because of them. That's a lot of description there, by the way. Notice that, right? Why? This is the most important verse. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you. And why does God go with us? Just to watch? Just to verbally encourage? No. What does it say? To fight for you against your enemies. To fight for you against your enemies to save you. For victory. For victory. And it's God who's fighting. He may use these earthen vessels. He may send you. He may send me. We see in the New Testament, he sent the disciples. Paul and others spoke before the magistrates. Spoke before the powers of the church. Spoke before kings. Went to Rome. Testified there. But you see, really, and I believe they knew it, it was God that was fighting for them. Right? And the scripture even tells us, take no thought for what you are going to say. Why? Because the Lord is going to use those vocal cords. Because God is able to fill our minds with what needs to be said, to whom, when, and how. My God can do that. Because it says He will fight for us against our enemy. Two more verses. 1 Corinthians, <coughs> back into the New Testament, and then we're going to close in the Old, but in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, First Corinthians 15, familiar verse once again. None of these should be a surprise. But look at the emphasis, verse 57. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory. How? Through our Lord Jesus Christ. See, that's the acknowledgement that we all need to make each and every day. Okay, and in this particular case, it's speaking about death, right? Verse 56, the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory 
through our Lord Jesus Christ. Every victory that I receive as a child of God is because the Lord is moving. Because the Lord is making a way. Not because I'm so smart, not because I'm so gifted, not because suddenly my immune system is so good because of my own doing. No! It's because the Lord delivers. It's because the Lord provides the wisdom. The Lord provides the knowledge. Which then, yes, with His help we can put into practice. But that verse is so important, right? The God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's something that no one else can claim but a child of God. And that's why we should always be so happy, so praising the Lord, so thankful for each and every day that God has given us. Because it's not always going to be smooth sailing. And this might be a little bit of a uh, different way to end a message of encouragement, but I think it's still there. But here's a little glimpse of reality that Isaiah spoke of long, long, long ago in chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60. <clears throat> I believe the Lord is speaking to each and every one of you and is speaking to me as we read beginning at verse 1. Isaiah 60 verse 1. First he says, Arise! That's you. That's me. It's God's people. Arise! Shine! Can't shine when you're gloomy. Can't shine when you're sad. For thy light is come. Notice where the light is. Is it in you? Is it from me? No. It's coming from someplace else. Where? New Testament tells us from Jesus. He's the one who gives us the victory. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For, behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. That's not a great situation. But, it says, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, that's God's children, shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. That's God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit. In the New Testament, we see that image of a flame coming and resting upon the believers. Right? The glory of the Lord, here it's talking about, his glory shall be seen upon thee, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light, which is really the light of the Lord, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. See, that only happens because God's people are different. God's people are, yes, they were in the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but we're not of that. So in the midst of that gross darkness, in the midst of the darkness that is covering the earth, and I would say Isaiah was perhaps seeing what was happening then, but it sure fits with what's going on now. Darkness, gross darkness, covering the earth. And the people that are not believers. But God's people aren't that people. Okay? We are not to be that people. We are the people who arise and shine. Imagine, in the midst of the storm, and this is where that whole lighthouse picture is so perfect, and the imagery that Jesus used of the candle, right? That's high where everybody can see it. That's when you want that. That's when we need that. That's when a lighthouse is really important. Not in the beautiful weather, not in the great shiny weather when everything is clear. It's when there's gross darkness. That's when you really need that lighthouse to shine. And God spoke to me this week about being a lighthouse. You and I, we're the structure. We're the vessel. But there's a light that shines from that lighthouse as the song goes. Right? And that light 
it originates from some power that is far greater than the mortar of the lighthouse. And similarly for you and for me, let's look at the scripture and look at the victory that is there. They had trials, they had tests, they were in bondage, they were captive. I mean, you know, you could look at that and say, wow, so many terrible things. I've never gone through the scripture and tried to build a list. The bad things that happen and the good things that happen. And probably a good reason never to do that is because I want to focus on the good. And I want to remember that God always makes a way through every trial. And every problem, he makes a way of escape. And that gives me joy. That gives me peace. But it also encourages me to keep marching on. To keep doing, like it said there in Deuteronomy, to go out to fight the enemy. And to keep doing, as it says here in Isaiah, to arise and shine. See, God's people, for God's people to get up is great. But that's not the end. We have to shine. Right? You can't just sort of say, yes, I'm a Christian, here I am, and sit down again. No. God's people have to get up so they're noticed. Right? See, this is the whole thing, right? Arise. That means you're going to be seen. And the reason you're going to be seen is because then the Lord says, shine. And then he goes on to explain how important it is to remember that the light that is shining is the glory of the Lord. That God promises here in Isaiah, and I believe we can claim the same promise today, that God promises to pour out His glory upon His people so that they can do what the Lord tells us to do. Remember, God's never going to tell you to do something that He hasn't equipped you to do. We have to just be prepared to accept it. To claim it. You know, somebody says, here's a life jacket, and you say no, and you drown. Well, whose fault is that? It's yours. You didn't accept the gift. And one of the things that we have to desperately do is make sure we are accepting the gifts that the Lord is willing to give. Right? Here the Lord was saying he was going to shine his glory, he was going to pour out his glory upon thee, upon the people. And if the people said no, well, I imagine then they would be part of the darkness that's covering the earth, the gross darkness. Let's not be a part of that. Let the Lord's light shine through you, through me, as you go home, and tomorrow, as the day starts afresh, Praise the Lord. Thank Him for everything. And now if it's pouring rain outside, and maybe you were planning on doing something out there, and now you're grumbling and complaining, stop. And thank the Lord that the roof is holding, and that there's no rain pouring in on top of you now, and that you have a warm and comfortable place where the fridge is full, and the electricity hopefully is still working, and all of these things that God has blessed us time and time and time again. And so even if it's gloomy and raining outside, thank God for the victories tomorrow. And remember, every one of them came, not because you're so bright or you're so wonderful, or I'm so bright and wonderful, or we're so bright and wonderful, or we're because we're Canadians, or whatever, whatever you want to put in there. It's not because of any of that. It's because I can say I'm a child of God, and the Lord, He's the one who provides the victory. So stand with me this evening, <coughs> and as we close, and then it's time to pray. And so thank the Lord, and let God give you that list of all that He's done for you. And uh, remember those that are working elsewhere. And once again, I, you know, I say to you, I say this fairly frequently right now, but Glenda continues to do a wonderful work, and her latest pictures, you know, she drives a big suburban SUV thing, you know, kind of a truck, um, and she posted some pictures. The entire thing, from behind the driver's seat, right out to the back, 
which is a big space, it was full of candy. And I think she said over 2,000 bags of candy. This year they were so blessed that they didn't have to fill the candy bags themselves. They ordered the candy from somebody and they went and picked it up, all pre-packaged and all ready to go. Um, and so she was thanking the Lord for the great, great blessings, and I don't know how many calories were in that truck, but it was a massive, like, I mean, we're talking the whole thing from floor to ceiling, it was just packed full of candy, and that's all going to be distributed, and they've also done thousands of gifts, they've really been blessed this year, um, and that means the people have been blessed, and where does that come from? From the Lord, right? That victory, that's the Lord moving, and so we thank God for that. So if you can't think of something to praise the Lord for in your own life, praise Him for what He's doing in the lives of others. Praise God. Let's close. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you, Father, for encouragement. And I thank you, dear Lord, for joy. And Father, just for reminding me and reminding us, Lord, that we have victory and we can claim it each and every day. Each and every day. And when there's something in my way, some kind of a pit, some kind of a stumbling block, some issue, whatever it happens to be, help me, Lord, to remember you have made a way of escape. You've made a way of escape. And I just have to come to you, present my petition, and then wait, and then listen, because you are going to lay out for me the plan. You will show me the scripture. You will bring me a song. You will speak by your spirit to my heart, to my spirit. I may even be so blessed to hear your voice audibly. You can move in a whole bunch of different ways. But whichever way you are going to move, help me then to listen. Then to put into practice, to be obedient, and to give recognition to the fact that you are the one. You are the one who gave that victory to me, who made my body healthy again, who strengthened my family, who provided for those that are, were in difficulty. All these things and more than I could even say. Lord Jesus, your hand is there for your children every step of the way. Thank you, Lord. Be with us as we pray and help us each to have our eyes open our ears tuned in and to let us see and recognize just how amazing every day with you truly is and how, Father, we really sincerely need to praise you and thank you more. In Jesus' name, amen.